Thank you, and good evening. And don't be listening to him. Because I don't know what he's on, but anyway. Um, it, actually, it's 12 years. You see, where did that year go to? Um, 12 years ago today, the 21st of September 2004, I was comatose at this moment in time because I had a mastectomy um, under my um, gorgeous uh, surgeon. And um, I do remember going in that morning and saying to him, it's the left one, it's the left one, don't get it wrong, it's the left one, because that's important, I would think. Anyway, um, two years before that, I had found a lump, and I took myself off to my GP, this poor GP. Um, anyway, he said, oh, you're grand, it's of no importance whatsoever, so I thought, great. I ran out of his surgery, delighted with myself. I was fit, healthy, and no cancer in the family. Um, slim, uh, eating very well, not smoking, drinking a little bit, um, wine at the weekend. Um, so a, a journalist said to me last week, the week before, um, did you second guess the, the GP? And I said, uh, no, because I had a degree in photography, not in medicine. I mean, if a doctor tells you you're okay, you're, you know, you think you're great. You, or, um, hurry home. Um, so um, uh, two years later, my husband uh, commented on the size of the um, lump, and so I took myself off. And I had um, a, a mammogram and a biopsy, and I was told by um, a lovely man in um, uh, Blackrock that uh, I was going to have a mastectomy. He just knew it. But he wasn't the man for me. Um, Arnie was the man for me, and um, so anyway, so I went off to Arnie, and it was a, uh, on the VHI ad, they say it was a whirlwind. Well, it is a whirlwind. You're given like two, maybe two and a half weeks between being diagnosed and um, having the operation, and there's a lot to take in. Uh, first of all, the news that you have the big C is you know, it's overwhelming, it's, it's uh, appalling, it's terrible. It's, um, I had a son of nine years of age and um, you start to think, uh, will I see him grow up? Will I see him graduate? Will I see him marry? Well, he's six foot three, he graduated from UCD two weeks ago and um, uh, I don't know about the marriage bit, but we'll wait. I won't buy the hat just yet. Um, anyway. He, um, yeah, and so it, I was also told that having a loving, close uh, family around you is very important for support and um, your friends as well. Um, we told everyone immediately rather than keeping it all a secret. I think that's, that's difficult, um, trying to keep a secret as big as that. Um, so I always advise um, uh, girls, uh, just let it out there, um, and uh, that's one hurdle over. Um, it, it, being positive, they tell you, be positive, be positive, and I'm a very positive person, and so I was positive, but sometimes I was positively pissed off, <laughs> you know yourself. And so anyway, I went in, had a mastectomy, oh no, um, uh, during those two weeks you're having biopsies, mammograms, blood tests, all sorts of things. And um, I was on the internet, blah, 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 and um, really the internet should be thrown out when it comes to breast cancer because there are all these stories of, if you eat raw vegetables, if you drink miso soup, if you drink green tea, if I drank another cup of green tea, um, so, um, it, it's all quite daunting. Um, so my advice to anyone is, you know, Follow the professional. You don't take your car into an old garage, you bring it into the Ford garage or to the Mercedes garage and you leave it. You don't question the guy when he's saying, oh, you know, you need... So I, these people are doing this every day. They're, they're experts, um, making huge inroads. Um, Arnie said to me the other day, oh, you know, if you were having it now, you probably wouldn't need chemotherapy. I said, what? Why did you say that to me? Can you just keep that one quiet? Chemotherapy. There is a little treat. Um, <laughs> anyway, oh no, I, going back to reconstruction, you have to make a decision beforehand about reconstruction. So um, I was given these lovely leaflets and you open them up and it's like <gasps> gruesome. I mean, you have to change the photographs. They're desperate. 
You wanted slide? Haven't I shown you slide? Anyway, I chose to have a tissue expander, which I consider sort of like a whoopee cushion put in. And then uh, there's a port here at the side, and we have a stud farm, so I'm very um, uh, familiar with horse injections, and you know, the big one. And so, um, Sean Carroll, who's my plastic surgeon, um, I just didn't know you at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, uh, he would, every you know, month or whatever, I'd go to the hand clinic in Vincent's because it was the handiest way to see him, and all these people with hand problems in there, and go perfect to hand. But anyway, so he would um, inject this uh, saline fluid and over time it got bigger and bigger and then when we decided it was perfect um, we um, we uh, he exchanged it for a, a silicone implant and which is now known as the rock um, it, our farm is called Rock Farm Stud, and this is the rock. And because when I lie down, as I was last week in Italy, lie down, it stands up, and the other one just sort of goes up. <laughs> and you have to sort of go, oh, right. And, um, but you know what? I have a great cleavage, and I was going to wear, I was going to wear something revealing, but then I thought, that's tacky. Um, but I do, I do, I do occasionally. And unless somebody is going to tell you that you're going to sort of show once you have a small cleavage boobs are great for you know having fun when you're young and <laughs> breastfeeding and after that really you know I do I do care um, so once I woke up or and he said we've got it all took the limb notes you're great grand and you know what I was and I never looked back from that moment on I was back on my horse four weeks later um, and uh, it, it was all grand and then it came chemo and um, as we all know, chemo is such a great thing to be having, um, especially when you didn't need it, um, <laughs> as he tells me now. Um, anyway, chemo, uh, a couple of things. Um, chemo uh, exhausts you, you're totally exhausted by the end of it. Um, you're starving all the time. Um, and you are, and of course, the hair. And I had been a fashion model in the 70s and 80s. And I had long curly hair down to my waist. And you know what? They liked the, the hair more than they liked me. They booked the hair. It was just a thing. They, they loved my hair. And I loved my hair too. And then, you know, it started coming out in handfuls. And I just wasn't brave enough to shave it all off, which of course I should have done, but I held on to like hey, wisps. It was pathetic, really. And I got some lovely wigs and I had scarves. And um, you, you, when you have a mastectomy, you can wear, you know, clothes, a scarf, a, a whatever. People don't need to know that you're lopsided and you only have one breast. Um, yeah, lose your hair, you lose your eyebrows, you lose your eyelashes. But there is a silver lining. You don't keep hitting this. Don't have to shave your legs for six months and you get a Brazilian. <laughs> you know, like you wanted one. But any, anyway, um, <laughs> the, the, the only women at that time, the only women that I knew who had breast cancer were all dead. So times have completely changed and just in 12 years, I mean, which is quite amazing. Exhaustion, when you're having chemo, you really need to be kind to yourself, I found, and um, you know, just do it by the book, do it as they say, get loads of rest. Um, Max would go to school in the morning, I'd send him down to the local national school in British Bay, and then I'd run back up and jump back into bed and um, you know and rest and then when he, I collected him at three o'clock I was able to go down the farm with him have him on his pony all of that stuff that make the dinner um, but you really are tired and um, a girl once told me that um, don't go on holidays directly after you've finished chemo because you're totally wrecked it seems like a good idea but it's not so you need to just give yourself a bit of time and um, I remember my, my husband, I finished sort of early March and then it was Paddy's Day and um, for whatever reason there was nobody in the yard, horses needed feeding, my husband had a horrendous flu and um, I thought, oh, I can do this, go down the yard, I fed up the horses, so, you know, I don't know, maybe there were 20 of them or something, gave them hay 
and coming back up the hill, I remember hanging onto the wall um, of, and, and just really not being able to move another centimetre. I was totally whacked. Um, so that is one of the side effects. Um, I then went on to a Rimadex um, for six years. Um, which, uh, because my tumour was um, hormone driven, um, it, um, you know, um, um, whatever it does, what's it do? Oh, yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> and, and so, um, <laughs> and, um, uh, so and when I was finished, it was actually, uh, David Fenley, I was sort of whinging because he wanted me to finish after five years and then I was sort of pushing and pushing it for six years. Now you tell me it could have been ten years. But anyway, I was a bit apprehensive when um, I, had to, uh, I had to give it up. Um, it, it, my, it, my sister said that a friend of hers had said, that it took you two years to get back to normal. And um, I was, oh, don't be silly, sure, I'm grand, you know, after eight months or whatever it was. But looking back on it now, to get back to the way you were before um, does probably take about two years um, because, you know, I don't know why, but it does. Um, to get your figure back because you, all you want to do when you're on chemo is eat. Um, I did put on a couple of kilos, and um, which wasn't great. Um, a positive attitude. Um, just because you have um, mastectomy, breast cancer, whatever, doesn't mean that your the fa tooth fairy is going to come along and give you a positive attitude. You have to have had it before um, you started. So I've met loads and loads of girls who, who you think business women, you think they're going to just, you know, gung ho and just go through this um, experience, and they don't. They fall apart. So you don't really know how you're going to um, adapt to it until you get to it, and um, and you have to be um, supportive of your friends and loved ones if they're whinging or if they're whatever, um, because that's everyone is different. Um, uh, pain, um, pain, uh, you know, you get, I, I can't remember what, maybe it's with chemo um, or Rimadex, you get like, you get out of the bed in the morning and your ankles are like locked and you're like a little old lady going over to um, the bathroom and then you, you know, you're grand. But um, knowing people of your own age is a great thing and speaking to them who have gone through the experience because they can say, oh, you know, that, that lasts for 10 seconds and then it'll be gone, you'll be grand. That's all part of it. So that's quite good. But um, pain, you're lying in bed at night, get a pain in your big toe. Oh my God, cancer. Of you get a pain in your neck. It's come back. It's, uh, yeah. uh, well, this goes on for a couple of years. You don't actually voice your opinion. It's in your head. But um, I wasn't nudging my husband going, it's come back in my big toe. You, you, you don't do that. But, uh, you, you know, it's always sort of niggling away. And then life takes over and you just, you know, you grow out of it and you... Um, you, um, but all this pain, um, it, it, anything to do with um, unco being uncomfortable and whatever, it's so much better than the alternative, which is you know what. So um, that's, I suppose, that's all I can say. Yeah.